1963, the United States spent $75 million on food stamps. Last year, we spent $75 billion on SNAP, which is just another way of saying food stamps. So you might think Americans are getting way more benefits than ever before. But that's not the case. It's kind of complicated. Public assistance is way more than just food stamps, though, or SNAP cards, as they're called in the hood. We provide to fellow Americans disability payments and TANF, which is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, basically free money to poor folks. There's also free or reduced health care, free or reduced school lunch programs, housing vouchers, free public housing, energy assistance programs, and probably a bunch of other stuff that's not listed here. But for the sake of brevity in this video, we're just generally going to refer to all of these as welfare moving forward. Now, most good-hearted Americans would say that there should be a temporary welfare assistance program for people who need a bridge to get back on their feet. A sudden illness, a loss of a job, a major setback, those can't be prevented, and they can happen to anyone. So, some amount of time to assist an American in the short term is a great safety net, which is one reason we're a great country. It's the chronic welfare recipients that cause consternation, the ones that take advantage, that stay unemployed because it's easier, the ones that have more kids just to get the bennies, the folks who don't try to improve their lives because it's much easier to just get free stuff. Those are the ones that make welfare in America so frustrating to many, and that's why we now have welfare reform. Today, we're going to talk about the welfare capitals of America, and also talk about the places in America that aren't on welfare a lot. We're going to learn a lot, there's some pretty interesting stuff, and some surprises too. So, let's get started on the welfare capitals of America. Okay, so before I begin, I wanted to reiterate that I know many Americans are trying to get off of the welfare system, and that many aren't proud to be on it. Now, let's visit the welfare capitals. We begin in Kentucky, where the average Kentucky resident gets $2,517 per person per year in welfare benefits. Now, some people don't get any money. Most people here, in fact. But some people get six or $700 a month in government assistance. And when we're talking about bennies, we're referring to two main forms of welfare, food stamps and cash. Food stamps are a debit card that's automatically refilled each month. It's called a SNAP card. And by cash, we mean money electronically deposited into a bank account for living expenses. That's called TANF. Anyways, Kentucky ranking so high isn't a surprise, considering it has the seventh highest poverty rate at 15%. But as we'll soon see, just because residents are poor doesn't mean their state hands out a lot of money. Some of the poorest states hand out the least amount of money. The state of Oregon ranks as the ninth biggest welfare capital in the nation, where the average Oregonian gets about 2250 bucks each. Again, not everyone, just those who need it. And Oregon ranks fifth at 18% for number of residents who get food stamps. Also worth mentioning is that welfare expenditures in this state total $10 billion every year. Of course, this is a very liberal state, so they're going to hand out a lot of money here. Two other big reasons so many people depend on welfare in Oregon are this state's high cost of living and lack of affordable housing. Portland's high homeless rate is proof of that. And you might be wondering, can homeless people get welfare? Of course. The homeless people you see may be getting food stamps if they follow the rules. In terms of housing assistance, well, they don't have a house, but each state has a different way of using its TANF money to provide short-term housing assistance to homeless people. So there's a good chance there's money set aside to help house them, too. The state of Maine ranks as eighth highest in terms of welfare benefits per person. While the state has a very small welfare expenditure, remember there aren't very many people here either, Maine ranks 11th for food stamps at about 12%. That's just a little bit higher than the national average. 40 million Americans rely on food stamps to help purchase groceries every month or about one in 10 of us. Question arises, how many of them are exploiting the system? There's tons of cases where people sell food stamps for money or use them to buy steaks to feed their dogs. It's estimated that of the 500 billion handed out each year in welfare benefits, 5% is due to welfare fraud. Examples of welfare fraud include not reporting work hours, pretending to be single, pretending to have more kids than you actually have, pretending to be somebody else, and selling your snap cards for cash. Snap for crack is a thing, people. And then you have people like this all over Facebook. They could be construed as leaning on the system a little bit too much. The state of Delaware ranks 7th for welfare per capita. While total welfare spending here is the 7th highest, the total welfare dollars handed out is low, 
since this is the sixth least populous state. And by now you might be thinking, are all poor people on welfare? Well, actually no. In fact, the number of us getting welfare is going way down. Back in 1979, 82% of poor families got welfare. Now that number is closer to 20%. Why? Because of welfare reform, which sets a five-year limit and stricter eligibility criteria. Welfare used to be called AFDC, or Aid to Families with Dependent Children. Back in the day, two-thirds of all poor families got AFDC, but there were too many problems with the American welfare system back in the 70s and 80s, so they changed the rules, primarily because the AFDC program was thought to have created welfare dependency. Parents weren't motivated to get jobs, and under the old welfare system, the more kids you had, the more money you got each month. So now, under welfare reform, TANF, states can decide how much money to give families instead of just families getting a check each month with little scrutiny. Today, the average eligible family gets a check for 450 bucks each month. New Mexico is a really poor state, and as such, it has a lot of needy residents. It has the third highest poverty rate at 18%. In Las Cruces, a quarter of the population is on food stamps. Farmington has 21% of its people on them. In fact, New Mexico has the highest percentage of people on food stamps of all U.S. states. Earlier, we talked about the total welfare budget each year for food and housing. Here's a chart which shows the total U.S. spending. 14% of our annual $3.5 trillion budget is spent on safety nets like food stamps and welfare. If you counted Medicare and Social Security, then that would be half of our total annual budget, which means half of our tax money goes to the poor and the elderly. Also of note, Republicans want to cut SNAP spending by 30% over the next decade. Minnesota is another Democratic state with a high welfare budget. In fact, most of the states on this list are Democrat-controlled. Here in Minnesota, $15.6 billion is spent on welfare annually, and the average resident gets $2,800 every year, or $233 a month. Like many other Americans, some Minnesotans are going to be chronically welfare-dependent, and some just need a bridge. You can see on this chart that of all major assistance programs across the nation, 43% are on welfare for three to four years, and only 31% are on welfare for under a year. Now Vermont's the most generous welfare state of all, where 78% of families in poverty receive cash assistance. Under the new rules, each state gets to decide how much money to give out and what criteria to use for handing out welfare. Some states set the bar high and make you get a job and cut you off earlier than other states do. While in Vermont, 78% of poor people get some form of welfare, in Louisiana, that number's 4%. In Louisiana, you have to be super poor to get cash assistance, and even then, they only get half of what a poor family in Vermont gets. Does that mean poor people in Louisiana should move to Vermont? Uh-oh, Vermont! Other states with low poverty to welfare ratios are Texas, Wyoming, Georgia, and Arkansas, meaning Poor people in those states don't get as much as they do in states like Vermont and California. Now, Louisiana is a very poor and a very black state. What percentage of each race is on welfare? The stereotype is that African Americans are most likely to be on welfare, and that is sort of true. Blacks make up 12% of the population, but receive 30% of all welfare. Whites make up 62% of the population, but make up 28% of all welfare recipients. Hispanics are 18% of the population, and they earn the most in welfare at 37%. Massachusetts is probably the most liberal state of all, so no surprise it ranks so high here. The state has the 10th highest poverty rate and is the fourth most expensive state in which to live. Not a good combination for poor folks. Springfield leads the way here, where 20% of residents are on SNAP, and that's the 14th highest rate in the country. You might be surprised to see Alaska so far on this list. Here, more than $2 billion is spent annually on food stamps and housing assistance. Each person gets, on average, more than three grand a year in Alaska. I would never go on welfare. I could never tell my friends I was getting food stamps. <laughs> well, Karen Mappy, that's pretty damn shallow of you, I have to say. You don't know what might happen down the road, and all those taxes you pay may end up helping you and your kids one day. And look at all the kids you have, too. You better hope Mappy keeps his job, because you ain't got a J-O-B. Mommy, are we on welfare? See what you did? <laughs> okay, we're almost done here. So I'm going to send the Mappy family on their way. We don't want to keep everybody waiting. And which U.S. state hands out the most welfare per person in the country? New York does. This state spends $25 billion every year on welfare, and the average person gets more than $3,300 each year. Hopefully, they're putting it to good use and trying to improve their lives. 
New York has the fifth highest cost of living and has the nation's 11th highest rate of people on food stamps. Now you might be wondering, where's California on this list? Per capita, it's somewhere in the middle in terms of spending per person. But there are some cities here with some huge needs. Places like Fresno, Visalia, and El Centro are all in the top 15 for food stamp assistance nationally. And our other big state, Texas, it's not very high on the list either. But Brownsville, Laredo, and McAllen are all in the top 10 for U.S. cities with the highest percentage of food stamp recipients. And El Paso isn't too far behind either, where 19% of folks are on SNAP. And I'm sure you're wondering which U.S. states have the lowest welfare budgets. I've made a list for you, and they are as follows. Most of these are conservative states. Welfare reform has helped take Americans' reliance and dependence off of free money and free stuff. It's kind of encouraged people to get a job and be responsible, but it's also controversial too, because how do we take care of our poor people? Do we raise taxes or do we have a universal basic income? Let us know in the comments below. In any event, we learned a lot about the universal welfare system here in America, and uh, there were some surprises. And if you're watching this and you're having a rough time, baby steps, just keep trying and plugging away. We have your back and you're gonna be okay. And now a clip of a man who showed up to California with only 500 bucks in his pocket and he became an icon. If he can do it, anyone can. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.